What's up baseball players, coaches, parents. In this video, I'm gonna cover are analytics important for young baseball players? So analytics can mean, it's, it's kind of a big catch all term, right? It can mean advanced statistics. It can mean some of these swing trackers. We kind of lump it in and it's not really, we shouldn't really lump it in with all this stuff. But for today's video, we're gonna talk about things that sort of fall under that whole umbrella. Like again, swing trackers, like diamond kinetics. Um, pitch spin rate trackers like Rapsido, advanced statistics, things that Game Changer can, can track at the youth level, stuff like that. Whereas in the major leagues, they have all these crazy stats. They have track man data. They soon have the Hawkeye system. Uh, they have lots and lots of interesting statistics. So the whole catch-all of analytics we're going to cover, is that important for youth baseball players, hitters, pitchers, infielders, all of them. So stick around. I think you'll enjoy this video. So let's go over the good things first, and then we'll cover some of the things that I think are negative or just are kind of a waste of time and aren't probably worth paying for and really spending that much time on. So number one, for the analytics and all that stuff, the high tech stuff, if it builds excitement and it gets your kid excited about training, and if you're a player, I'm talking to you, and it makes you more apt to throw a bullpen and you wanna check your numbers with your velocity and your spin rates and, and, and track your swing and your launch angle and your attack angle, all that stuff, that's fine. If it's motivating you and it's a positive motivation, great. On the other side of that is you can't be constantly expected to trend upward. Nothing is, is completely linear in baseball. Like you're not going to gain one tenth of a mile per hour as a pitcher every day forever, right? Your velocity is going to fluctuate a lot until it starts to normalize when you're older. Um, in the weight room, you're not going to consistently add weight to the bar every week. If you did, you'd be like the strongest human of all kind after like a year of lifting, right? So even really small amounts of, of gains for strength training, for your exit velocity as a hitter, or your pitching velocity as a pitcher, they're going to still undulate. They're still going to go up and they're going to go down, but hopefully trend in the right direction over time. So you can use this to track, but you cannot become obsessed with it. And you cannot let your self-esteem get hooked to it where if you didn't exceed last week's numbers, you're in despair, you're feeling sad, you're feeling depressed. And now, you know, it's this constant emotional roller coaster. So do not let that happen. But if it does motivate you and build excitement, great. Here's the other thing. So number two, don't pay for this stuff under the pretense that it's necessary. It's not necessary. Think of the Dominican uh, Republic players, some of the best in the world. Why are they so good? It's not because they have tons of high-tech equipment. They have barely have shoes on their feet. I went down there and I coached an American team. We played against the academies. They were sharing one batting helmet. They were hitting with aluminum bats that had no paint on them because they'd been hit so many times. You hear about American kids complaining that their bat's dead. Their $400 bat is dead after two months, right? It doesn't have any pop anymore. Those kids don't care about that. They just want to go out there and hit and play and they play really, really well and they keep getting better. So all this stuff can be a help, right? If it helps you visualize and understand yourself as a pitcher, as a hitter, great, but it's not necessary. So do not buy into the coach that says, yeah, you got to do this if you want to keep up with everyone else. You know, this is really important. Like this is what all the best players are doing. It's BS. It can be a, a good tool. It can be a help to you but it absolutely is not necessary, especially at amateur baseball. This stuff is much more necessary when you're a pro. I mean, you talk about like Justin Verlander, something he did. They made a little tweak, the Astros, with his with the way he gripped his four-seamer, and they got an extra boost in spin rate, which had a meaningful effect on his swing and miss rate. Those are little tweaks that can help a world-class pitcher get a little bit better, a little bit better, but still a meaningful amount better, right? Whereas the youth players, they have so much to gain, I personally don't care what the Rhapsodo reading is of a 16 year old slider. Like I can play catch with him as a coach and I can tell him which of the 10 sliders he threw me were better. And I can reinforce his arm position, his mechanics and help him understand which one was better without having to go to the readout and say, okay, that one was 1,632 RPMs. Your best today was 1,664 RPMs. It's not really that relevant at young ages. It's still interesting information and it can be useful but it's not necessary information. It just depends how you're training, how hard you're working. And just remember some of the best players in the world, especially at young ages. I mean, you see Dominican players who are 10, 11 years old, they're incredible. It's because they're constantly working. They're constantly taking ground balls. They've just taken more swings, more ground balls, more fly balls. They're in better condition. 
They're, they've just outpracticed any American kid for almost any age. That's what matters most. Lastly, I just want you to think about what's good for you long term uh, as far as like can finding your path in baseball. So whether you're a hitter, whether you're a pitcher, whether you're a catcher, the high tech stuff can be useful. Like we've covered that a bunch, you know, learning the different stats I think are helpful. One example is um, first pitch strikes. That doesn't seem like a very advanced stat, but for a lot of players, it kind of is like, can you use game changer to break down what your regular strike percentage thrown as a pitcher is to say it's 70%, but then maybe your first pitch strike percentage is 62%. That tells us that there's a mismatch because your strike percentage should be essentially the same over all counts, plus or minus little fluctuations, right? And so if there's a big disparity, so little Johnny throws 62% first pitch strikes, but he usually throws 70% strikes as a whole, that's something that as a coach, you can say, okay, hey, is there a mindset thing? Are you a little bit nervous to just get ahead in the count earlier? Are you trying to be too fine? Are you afraid they're going to ambush you and beat you on the first pitch? Like, what can we do about that? Uh, I think using stats at a young age is good to make important judgments about players mindsets situations they excel in situations that they don't excel in and ways that we can find to help them get better so i think beyond using just swing trackers and just and spin rate data measurement tools like rapsodo um, which are really cool and they're really interesting and useful tools i think also using some of the advanced statistics going through game changer and just starting to learn about them can also be helpful but again, it's still not the end all be all. The, the end all be all for youth baseball is having fun, developing a good work ethic, developing the mindset that helps you deal with the incredible ups and downs and slumps of baseball, which is the biggest thing that's gonna weed players out. And then also really learning what it takes to, to grind. And I don't like overusing that word, but just to grind through a season and consistently be good. You don't have to be great. You don't have to be amazing. You just need to be consistently good. And that is being a good teammate. That's working hard. That's that's hustling every inning. It's being mentally in every at bat, whether you're a pitcher or a hitter or a catcher or an infielder or an outfielder. It's all of those things, being physically prepared, uh, being locked in in the dugout, focusing on the game. Those are the things that really, really matter in youth baseball. And the analytics and the swing trackers and the pitch trackers and the, and the interesting and unique stats, those are just like icing on the cake. So as a parent... I wouldn't spend much extra money on that stuff. If the place that you take your kid offers it, wonderful. Use it as a tool, listen when they explain it to you, you know, take it with a grain of salt, and also just learn about the way ga the, the game is changing because having some knowledge of all these new tools and the analytics and the stats is important. It's where the game's going, so you don't wanna be naive to it. But at the same time, remember that if anyone's trying to say this is the new way, Think of the of the kids from developing nations like the Dominican, like Venezuela, like Aruba. There's some amazing players coming up from those countries as they have been for years and decades or decades now, decades or years. Um, for a long time, players have been coming up from those nations where they don't have the wealth and they don't have the high tech, but they're still passionate about baseball and they're developing. So again, I just want to impress the biggest message here, which is that it's not necessary, but it is useful to learn, to listen, and to use this stuff if you want to, but don't break your bank with it. Don't bank your career on it and don't overuse it. And don't let measurement become this negative thing where again, if you're constantly tracking, you're going to see your numbers go down before they always go up. They're always going to go up and down. And that can be a big pit of despair for players when you're constantly videoing them, tracking them and trying to see progress every day, which is unrealistic over time. All right. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video and the others on my channel. If you're new here, I have a pitching book. I have another book about my career. It's a memoir. It's an amazing read for any of you who want to know what your kid's going to go through in the long term in baseball. I have online courses for pitching. I have a mental skills course called the Resolute Athlete. So if you're interested in learning more about what I do and what you can learn off the field, check out the description below and I'll see you in the next video.